So, uh, do you believe in the Holy Trinity as written in the Bible, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Okay, now, I believe in a great entity that's in three parts. It's a triune being. It is a pre-Sumerian uh, belief. Even the Sumerians, the, old, the oldest writings that we have, we've had contact with, describe the Godhead as three beings. But even the Sumerians, which we didn't really understand what they were writing about, compartmentalized it into understandable frames of reference. Those frames of reference were a father and like a son. Uh, uh, the Greeks later copied it as Uranus and, and uh, I can't remember all of them, but Anu and uh, Ea, which became Enki, Enlil. So yeah, there was, there was a tri triune nature. Uh, I believe that the Godhead outside the Sumerian yes, is a triune being, and we will understand more of those mysteries later, but the carnalized Christian version of God the Father and the Holy Spirit, well, 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 good, well God the Son and the Holy Spirit, is just that. It's just another attempt to explain something that is outside of our frames of reference, because we're inside a bubble, and until we escape this bubble, which is which is his intent remember he's the chief cornerstone he's coming to set the captives free this is the message of eschatology this is the message of the great pyramid in the in the arrival of the chief cornerstone it's not our fight it's not our fight and nor is it our responsibility to understand god it's not our under it's not even it's not even our personal responsibility to save another soul it's not in the overall scheme of things, what we do really doesn't have a whole lot of bearing on our eternal security. These things were already decided. We're not living in a real reality. We're living in a false one. So we have to assume certain things is true. Certain things have already been worked out, but they're outside of our sphere of knowledge. I don't, I don't denigrate Christians for believing what they do, a carnalized Christ, that a physical Jesus Christ walked the earth, performed miracles, and, and, and then the same carnalized Christianity, Christians also believe that Paul was one of the greatest apostles. But when you read the writings of Paul, you're not reading anything ever said or spoken, quoted, cited from Jesus. Nothing. Paul doesn't seem to know a single parable of Jesus. Paul does not mention a single miracle ever performed by Jesus. Paul doesn't know anything about a virgin birth or Joseph or Mary or Joseph uh, or uh, Arimathea, the uncle. Paul doesn't seem to know anything about the personal life of Jesus. But Paul was a student of Gnosis and anybody who has been a student of the Gnosis like myself will see the writings of the Gnosis all throughout the writings of Paul because he knew and believed in Christ and Christ crucified and that I can buy into because that belief system does not does not at all necessitate the actual physical appearance of a God who performed miracles and, and turned water into wine and was crucified and the sun darkened, which was a Phoenix episode that was stolen by the church and included in the text. And we have proof of this because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all mention it, but not the Gospel of Marcion, which is before them. The Gospel of Marcion is the Q document for which the book of Mark was written. And then, Mark, and then Matthew was written from Mark. And then Luke was written from Matthew, Mark, and the Q document. But John comes from another source. The Gospel of John is a purely Gnostic writing. That's why it's very, very different than the other books. Anyone who has dissected the New Testament verse by verse can show you that the Apostle Paul didn't know of the physical Jesus Christ. He knew of the Christos. And in the time where Jesus was supposed to have, to have lived, the belief in the Christos was everywhere in the Mediterranean area. And it was principally out of the Buddhist areas of Antioch in Syria and Alexandria, the Alexandrian Library. And there are very many references that are found in the New Testament written by Paul that actually came come from the writings 100 years earlier in the BC period from Philo Judaicus. 
Now, this is something I need to release videos on in the future. I'm not ready to do that now. I'm not, I am not an iconoclast. I don't like stepping on people's beliefs. I was a Christian for the first 40 years of my life until I, I believe I was awakened. I mean, I know I was awakened. I mean, I don't, it's a, I have all the resources and all the notes. I just, to me, it's not important because I don't believe that any of you any of your eternal security and who you are, your immortal identity is not changed by a belief in the Christ as a spirit who will come physically in the future or an immortal spiritual God who has already visited physically in the past is coming physically again in the future. It doesn't matter to me. To me, I believe you're just a victim of the programming that the Demiurge just set forth. There are over 17 crucified Savior gods who were all born of virgins on December 25th, way before Jesus came here. These were very well documented. I don't have to make these up. Anybody can go to any general library and, and, and research this. But I don't believe, like what's being put out by preachers today, that your eternal security is dependent upon your belief that a man was crucified for your sins. The ultimate gruesome sacrifice is terrible. It's terrible what, what the Demiurge has done. has turned this huge... God doesn't need to bleed to save you because all that requires physicality. God is totally spiritual. He's 100% spiritual. And any saving is going to be of spiritual beings. He doesn't care about the physicality. He doesn't care. 